Hi, welcome to Jill Shaman Art and welcome to my gallery. Today's tutorial, rocks in oils. We're actually going to be focusing on this piece. I'm going to flip you around, sorry. <laughs> here. This is the baby that we're doing, okay? This rock here, I look up close to them. They're quite detailed. And these ones here, okay? This painting tutorial, I think, has about 25 minutes worth of painting in. I will go through, smash out everything, okay, to try and really break the process down for you. With my colour palette, you might not actually see my colour palette, but I will go through and discuss the colours I'm using, why I'm mixing them. You know, rocks, are, a lot of people think, and there's lots of courses out there that say you just need to focus on three colours, okay? Just, you know, to pop in for your top face, your vertices, and your edges. And, you know, then just to bang a bit of a highlight for sun shining on it. Where I live in Tassie, the coast here is just mind-blowing. It's amazing, okay? All of these cliff faces and all of these rocks just have completely different textures. When it's sunset, on sunrise, the sun pelting down on them, honestly, it just makes them pop. They can be from fiery orange to yellows to pinks. They can change to, you know, looking really, really dark. Some rocks have that really smooth, shimmery appearance, while others are really textured and jagged and rugged. It's really important to build up realism from the get-go with pieces like that. There's no easy, quick fix to painting rocks and, and cliff surfaces. If you want them to look really, really detailed, you just have to bog in with brushes, as in with really fine brushes like these ones, I'm not sure if you can see that, sorry, very well. Okay, really fine, fine, fine brushes. There's a time and place. I do actually also like using angled brushes, especially if they're soft bristled, but they're quite short. Even though they're soft, they can be a little bit firm, so you can really, you can use them in different techniques to really get into the crevices of the rocks. You know, you can put in a lot of shape and detail with these babies, like them. So here we go, here starts the oil demonstration for you. Hope you enjoy. So I'm starting to pop in the shadows. They're going, this colour tone that I'm using at the moment is burnt umber, ultramarine blue, with just a drop of alizarine in, just because it's a sunset scene, so I wanted a bit of that alizarine in there as well. These shadows are going to not just represent the shadows, but they're also going to start defining where some of the rocks are specifically going to be located individually. So we're starting to build up not just colour tonal variations with shadows, we're building up perspective from the get-go with this area of rocks to make it look really dimensional. As you can see, by popping this dark tone in, it's making it look really disjointed, more than what the blocking was. That's normal, it's a part of the process. My rocks take a long, long time to do. Many hours of work have gone into these rocks. And it is just a matter of working really conscientiously through doing different layers, starting off with your darks, working through your mid-tones, coming back to your highlights, and then alternating between that process again and again and again to build up 100% realism, perspective, and have the composition of not just this area of rocks looking so dimensional, but having it fit in with the entire piece on the canvas as well. So the process, you'll find it will. They'll look absolutely amazing. They'll start looking really disjointed, then with different tonal variation build up they'll start looking amazing again. They'll become disjointed and look ugly. And then you think, oh my God, what am I doing? But again, all normal, part of the process. You just have to deal with it and know that they'll turn out okay in the end. So these lines look quite, quite jagged, quite straight, quite uniform, but you know, for me, this is the modelling phase of a painting, so it's not really detailing yet. We're just shaping where some of these rocks are going to be. I've picked up some burnt sienna. This will act as a mid-tone between those really dark, deep, creviced areas. This is going to be in shadow still, 
leading out to where the sun's bouncing on these rocks. Again, it looks really abominable with this colour because it doesn't fit in at all, but I need it there so that when I start popping in the highlights and coming back to different tones of shadow, it will make, it will all blend in smooth over and it will help generate new tones, which you'll see shortly. Now on the brush, I've got the Burnt Sienna with Yellow Oxide. So popping in a few lighter areas of the rocks. This isn't going to be where direct sunlight's hitting, but it will be lighter area. With the brush, I'm just using a flat brush. You can see I'm using it with different techniques. I'm pushing it firmer in some areas, softer in others, using the tip, using it flat, using the wide part, narrow part, twisting it around a little bit. I want this to be quite textured. And it's with those different movements that it does help build up realism from the get-go, rather than just blocking in and modelling with flat colours then coming over to detail afterwards. You need to start detailing in the modelling phase, I say. Now I've got a little bit of yellow oxide just by itself. Now this is going to be some of the areas where the light is directly touching base with these rocks. So as I'm doing this process now, it will stand out and again it will look a little bit too vivid and look out of place. But it will eventually blend in as we go. There's a time and place with rocks where you need the, the darkest tone to be smack bang against your lightest highlight for contrast to get that dimension and build up that realism. But there's also a time and place where you need your tonal values to be nice and probably close together. So this is the one where I'm putting these highlights. It's going smack bag against a darker shadow. But then you'll see some of them are actually popped in with that mid-tone that's there. So there's methods to my madness. And as we build up layers, you'll see it all gel together. It just takes a bit of time. So you need lots of patience with rocks. Regardless of what we paint, it's really important to always understand the light, the light spectrum, how light works, and, you, and the subject matter that you're painting. Okay, I know this area in Rocky Cape really well. I know the textures of the rocks and where the light source is coming from exactly. So you have to consider not just the light reflecting on top of these rocks. You've got light refracting from surrounding rocks into areas you wouldn't think light would hit. You've also got the light reflecting on the ocean and the waves and the splash next to it. So you've got light refracting again onto these rocks from the surrounding water and rocks. So when we paint from the get-go, we need to start building up that realism and emulating that to, to give the illusion that these rocks are really 3D. So by doing that, it's just, it's through all your tonal variations. I've now just gone to a little bit lighter, so I've got cad yellow and a bit of white now. So just 
roughing out where I want the direct sunlight touching these rocks. And then after this, I'll come back with mid-tones again. On the brush, so I've come back, I've got burnt umber, ultramarine blue, with titanium white mixed with this. So you can see it gives it that really, it's an unusual colour. And you can see it's sticking out and standing out and doesn't, again, it doesn't appear to fit in, but it will eventually. Why I've got this tone here is shadows are not one flat colour, they're multiple colours. And this is emulating the light that's refracting into these areas. It's not actually solely in the crevices, so I don't want it that Payne's grey dark near on black tone. I want it this tone for it to be a little bit lighter for, reflect, for refracting light, as well as it's got that nice little shimmer of giving the appearance that the rocks might be a little bit wet, having water fall down. Not so much cascade down, but just you can tell that water's hit them and they're a bit wet. So as I come up higher in this rock area, I'm still using that same tone, but I want that sparingly the higher up I go. And I, we will come over after and just break that tone or value up a little bit more in some areas to make it looking more realistic. So going back to how the light works with the rocks, if they're really rough and rugged like this, in the shadow and the deep areas, you want still light areas, as well as through all these highlights, you want your deepest, darkest colour to emulate crevices that's happening. It's the breakup of all the, these colours that help give realism. So I've got CAD orange. I do have a little bit of burnt umber with that. You can hardly tell, but there is actually a little bit of burnt umber with that, just to tone it down a little bit. And we'll come back with pure CAD orange a little bit later. So just moving across this rock area randomly with this colour. And as I don't reload the brush, the tone is actually dulling down a little bit, creating its own mid-tone with the colour that's already on the canvas. Working wet on wet with rocks is a brilliant technique, I think, to help build up realism. You can see just bogging into the, some of those shadow areas just to break up those tones a little bit more. Now with a liner brush, I've got cad yellow with titanium white mix now. So I'm not going over previous highlights, but very close to it. So this is representing direct sunlight now. And this is where we try to pop some of these highlights, not necessarily in straight lines. You want to really break up colour now, so you want them going over some of the shadow areas to represent where the rock's protruding. With a brush, you know, press fine in some areas, so you want some tiny little dots. Others, you want to use the side of the brush to emulate a few longer lines of light hitting it. Again, vary the um, techniques that you use with a brush. So 
Sometimes when you're working close up, it doesn't matter what you're painting, but I find especially with rocks, close up you can get that massive contrast with colours. So always just every now and then stand back from the easel to have a look at the perspective and the composition of that rock area from a distance before you come back in and keep changing over the same area if you're not happy with it close up. Again, you can see some of the areas now starting to pop and it is looking a lot more realistic because I'm popping some of those lighter tones in the shadows. Now going back to the darks, this is now just the burnt umber with ultramarine blue to give it that real, real deep colour. So coming in, breaking up in between these highlights, popping in some crevices. The bottom half of this rock area to me at the moment again is starting to look more disjointed again because of all these, the dark tones. So just bear with it. <laughs> There's methods to my madness and it will start pulling together again shortly. This rock in the foreground hasn't been detailed or finished, as well as the splash in the water, the ocean. Actually, none of this painting that you see here at the moment is in its finished state. I'm developing these rocks more. Then I'll come back and do the two other rocks in the painting that you saw, the distant headland there, which is mostly rock, and the ocean and the sky again all needs further detailing. So no components are finished. But I really, for me, I really get a lot out of um, painting rocks and detailing them. So I like having them worked up a little bit more before I do everything else on a painting. Now I'm basically just pushing the paint around now just to separate some of those colours just to soften those shadows a little bit more. Now this is just off-white. I've got titanium white with a little bit of cad yellow mixed with it. It looks more white than yellow, but it's not quite pure white as yet. It's easy for me to get carried away with this stage, but it's important again 
You want this done sparingly in some areas, not all areas. And while I'm doing this, I just want to quickly reiterate, it's really, when you're working with oils, the only medium I use is liquid, and I use the original one for that. When I'm working with glazes, I use the thinner style liquid, which is great for glazes, it's specific for glazes. But while I'm working in this chunky paint style, okay, the liquid origin, original is a fantastic medium. I don't use other mediums. It's really important to know your brand and the products that you use. The composition, the chemical composition of the paints, these days aren't necessarily compatible with all the mediums that were used, you know, 20 years ago in art. So it's really important to know your products, know what they're compatible with, and to actually know ratios when you're doing it. With the oil paints and liquid, if you use too much of the medium to thin, you will end up getting um, cracked, cracked paintings, you'll get disadhesions, and you actually may get yellowing as well. So know your paints, know your ratios. When I do the oil painting, I, you obviously need a lot more oil paint compared to the medium to prevent it from cracking down the track. And it's quite easy to get carried away and add more liquid to thin it down, thinking, oh, it'll dry quicker and it's easier to paint with. But you will actually get, you know, not a very good quality piece. So if you are interested and you're trying to sell work, always just be really cautious of things like that and find out about your products. So I've gone back to kind of a mid-tone, just representing a little bit more of the light refracting now. So it is a, it's the yellow oxide. I do have burnt umber with it. And you can see it's just pulling all these rocks together nicely now. And it's making those shadows not be so stark and so out of place, kind of pulling the shadow areas just gently up to where the sun starts beaming down on the rocks nicely. So for this tutorial, I've nearly finished this. Just coming back now with some finer touch-ups, just breaking up those colours where I think there's one tone in too much of a larger area, just to give a bit more variation and texture. I hope you've got something out of this. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. Um, request whatever you like. I'm more than happy to do different tutorials to suit your needs with what you are after. Again, hope you've enjoyed. Stay safe and thank you for watching.